introverted intuition. And it's taken me a while to get the notes for this, uh, to type it out, because there was a lot I wanted to say. In fact, it probably should be broken down into two videos, but I'll do my best to cover this first portion of it. So uh, like my other videos, I have made it a personal mission to get down to the very fundamentals. Again, I'm starting with these cognitive preferences and then um, going into what comprises each personality type after you understand these cognitive preferences. So if you really want to understand a type, you need to watch the, vi the videos of each cognitive function, uh, primarily the top two that are in my series before you even watch the type video, which I'll produce eventually. So uh, before we get into any details, like all my other videos, I'd like to cover the few basics that are widely misunderstood. Um, Myers-Briggs is about preferences, which mean that we all use aspects of all the psyche, not just part of it, um, not just a few functions while we ignore the others. Um, unless those functions are just totally underdeveloped or underpreferred so much that you just consciously don't make it an effort to uh, use those functions at all. But uh, you want to kind of think of your preferences like hardware. Uh, these preferences don't determine your behavior or your character or your values or those type of things. So what they do is they just establish how you uh, have cognition. So there's a few people that have learned uh, this particular aspect of me uh, and my, my bias toward um, and I say bias, but my really strong slant on understanding that Myers-Briggs is about preferences. It's not about the actual content of behavior or character, okay? So what really nags me to death is saying that, um, you know, unless you're joking, of course, but if you're serious that, oh, when you say a certain type doesn't do something, you know, like, oh, uh, INFPs can't lead organizations or an INFP doesn't doesn't want to do that. They may not. And that's why I use the words may and could. And I really, really hope that you guys pick that up for me at some point. That is likely for a type to do something because of their cognition, but it doesn't determine that actual thing. So what we're studying here is actually how those functions work and just showing you how it can influence behavior, but it doesn't actually determine behavior. So that's the thing you got to understand about that. So let's dive into intuition in general. Uh, I am going to be referencing notes a lot, so just uh, bear with me here. Intuition in general is a perceiving function that prefers to take in these abstract, conceptual, intangible data instead of tangible, concrete, sensory data. So when someone prefers intuition, they'll adopt an attitude on the manner in which they use that intuition. And those attitudes can be uh, the world of thoughts and subjectivity called introversion, or the external world of actions and objectivity, extroversion. Okay, so this is how Myers-Briggs uses introversion and extroversion. Introversion is not an introvert or an extrovert, which is often said in Myers-Briggs, introverts or extroverts. Um, we, I usually, sh I should not do this, but I shortchange it a lot and I say, hey, this person is an introvert. That's not actually my Myers-Briggs theory. Uh, there's no such thing as an introvert or extrovert. We use both. So think of it this way. An ENTJ has the cognitive function stack of T, E, N, I, S, E, and F, I. So there's two extroverted functions and two introverted functions. So technically they're an introvert and an extrovert, ambivert. So that you have to remember that aspect of it. Now they may spend most of their time in introversion because they prefer extrovert or extroversion, I'm sorry, prefer extroverted thinking. Okay, so you just remember that. The, so the slant in Myers-Briggs is that first letter in your acronym determines your dominant function, not who you are. So there's no such thing as introvert or extrovert. So unlike traditional theories on extroversion and introversion, uh, Myers-Briggs typology orientates the world of extroversion and introversion to be where one's focus is at any given time, which means that one may, may, may be making judgments in the world of introversion while perceiving in the world of extroversion. And unlike many other personality tools, Myers-Briggs does not compartmentalize introverts and extroverts, as its fundamental philosophy includes the usage of both introversion and extroversion, which I've just covered with you. So despite some of the cognitive functions being seen as traditionally more introverted or extroverted than another, for example, FE can be seen as traditionally more extroverted than TE. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So thereby, intuition has two potential attitudes, introverted intuition and extroverted intuition. And extroverted intuition, we've covered that in a previous video, so I'm not going to go to a lot of details on unless I'm using it to compare and contrast with introverted intuition. So people who prefer introverted intuition prefer their subjective impression of the abstractions initiated by an object which has received their focus over the possible outcomes of manipulating or changing the context of the object. So, okay, so remember this, they prefer that subjective impression. So if I look at an object, I'm seeing what that object is actually meaning to me. What data am I contriving from the object? So oftentimes you could see an introvert person who prefers introverted intuition. Um, they are looking at something and they could be reflecting. So there's oftentimes, here's a good example. I was on a plane today and I think I was looking at, uh, I was looking at my water bottle I have a joke video about this, but I actually was looking at my water bottle and it released an insight in me where I started really thinking about structure. 
And I started really thinking about structure and fluidity, structure versus fluidity. And that comes with structure versus fluidity and uh, people's conversational style or uh, people's uh, abstract style of uh, here's one person compared to another person or here's this. And then I started getting bigger and bigger. And I started linking the concept of this water. So I was staring at this water bottle, like really looking at it. And it really wasn't that I was thinking about the water bottle at all. It was just releasing insights in me. So I kind of just spaced out. And uh, that is very common for introverted intuitives. Not that that was a big insight for me, but it was just another thing that happens in my daily basis where I may be staring at something and looking at the outside that may be kind of like, whoa, what's going on with this guy? So um, that's a that's an example. I prefer to focus. OK, so I, I both I have both extroverted and intu introverted intuition. If you put them on a scale, right? Here's introverted intuition. Here's extrovert. I tend to focus on this side. Okay, so think of it like a hourglass tipped on its side, okay? I'm either focused on this side or focused on this side. And as you grow in life, typically you'll start your 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 area of focus, your field of focus rather, is going to expand. So you'll be including more of that unconscious side, but it's never gonna just switch lenses and you're all the way over here. Okay, that's not what it's that's not what happens when you have a, a, a naturally wired. It's like I'm not one day, no matter how stressed I am, I'm not gonna become right-handed, okay? It's just not gonna happen. So um, just remember that when that introverted intuition is subjective impression of abstractions initiated by an object which has received their focus. So let's say this, that water bottle received my focus over the possible outcomes of manipulating or changing the context of that office, uh, object itself. So I'm not thinking about what could I do with this object? How could this object become something else? How could this object influence? I'm actually paying attention to the abstractions released to this. I could consciously think about how those objects could become something else, but it may be difficult and challenging for me, whereas an extroverted intuitive may actually have that become very natural to them, okay? So just remember when I say object, it could be a series of facts or an actual physical object, a sound, a taste, or the feeling of something. Um, although we are able to see both of these abilities, like I said, one has a natural preference, so our, our angle is on one thing or the other. So the person who prefers introverted intuition, uh, the NI types, uh, generally feel that the, um, I'm sorry, the person who does not prefer introverted intuition, the NP types generally feel that the subjective perspective limits potential possibilities as it is too convergent. Okay, so it's it's confining. And so here's where the uh, any and NI clash is that any feels that uh, NI can be very stubborn or arrogant. Okay, so that's where uh, there's a big problem here. Um, that, so that's that's where the challenge is. Hang on one second. I'm going to type this up real quick. I'll cut this out of the final edit. So give me just a second here. Um, just making an edit here. So I'll so anyway, sorry about that. Um, so again, so remember, NI is very convergent and NE is very divergent. Okay. So all right. Um, well, let's talk about biases of NI. So those. Those that use introverted intuition as their choice of perception are often seen as too serious, internally conflicted, the genius mind, the overthinker, the assumptive prick. Um, <laughs> there's many different ways that people see introverted intuitives, especially INTJs and ENTJs, because there's no feeling consideration or there's very little feeling consideration. So uh, a lot of times we're so focused on the conclusion of these ideas or these things that we don't really take into consideration how others may be feeling based on our assumptions. So we're looking at these patterns and we're going, oh, okay, here's how it's working out. So it's likely you're going to see an NI type just, okay, so uh, let me give you this. If you've seen, um, if you've seen Goodwill Hunting, not that Goodwill Hunting himself or Will Hunting himself is not an NI user, not that he is or isn't because he's a fictional character, but there's a display of his NI preference when he just lays out everybody's life right in front of him. Here's how your life was. Here's how your life is. Here's how it will be. Okay. And here's what's happening. Here's what you're doing. He just predicts it based on like, for example, when he went into uh, Robin Williams's room and he looked at that little painting, he looked at that painting and assumed everything about Robin Williams's life. Okay. And whether he was right or wrong was not the point. Okay. So again, NI users are not always right. And that's, that's the, that's the, the false premise that people have on NI users is that, Hey, we think we're always right. It's that we're strongly convicted about something until proven otherwise. And so uh, in the end, you realize that he, Robin Williams had a huge impact on uh, Will Hunting and really influenced his life. So I think that's a really important thing. And so some of these biases can be true, but it does not entirely encompass the nature of NI, and the opposite can also be true. 
So in my opinion, the best way to understand introverted intuition is to understand introverted sensing. Introverted sensing and introverted intuition are both very, very convergent forms of perception, which means they're taking a set of stimuli and condensing them into one set of patterns, one very condensed set of patterns, okay? So ultimately comparing all incoming information or abstractions into that pattern. Think of it like blueprinting, okay? So when you look at an SI user versus an SE user, who's blueprinting and who's not, okay? So they're both blueprinting. It's just one is blueprinting one over the other. So just keep that in mind. Um, so a clear cut difference between the two functions is that uh, introverted sensing does not take meaning or an implication beyond the sensory data in the way that introverted intuition does. For this reason, SI users typically rely on traditions and outside authorities for these insights instead of focusing on them themselves. So giving them a motive or reason beyond what's visibly there. So for example, you'll find a lot of SI users going to church, um, looking for a lot of that deep theory or a lot of that deep, uh, that deep um, understanding of why these things are important. Whereas NI users typically will prefer to avoid those things. Uh, they like to form these insights on their own. So that's where you'll have a lot of challenges with NI users and say, getting them to go to a church or an institution or an education or something because uh, they don't really feel that others' insights are necessary for them to form their own insights and to see that. Whereas SI users rely on the details and the data of themselves and say that church or religion, you know, there's a challenge here because SI users, a lot of it is theological. You don't know if there's, you can't prove that there is or isn't a God. You can't prove it. So SI users feel kind of lost. So they rely on these outside authorities for the insight to convict them that there is a God. And not that you know, I personally believe there's a God, but again, there's a reason for that. I've already had my own insights. It wasn't given to me by an institution, a church or whatever. So you got to keep that in mind as well. All right. So let's dive into the details of introverted intuition. But before I do, I will warn you that I, it has taken me a lot of time to compile this information. I am talking very quickly. I'm glad that I'm gonna, you're going to be able to pause and record or pause and play, rewind this video as needed in future. But live, it's gonna be a little challenging to keep up with me, so just bear with me. I'm talking fast because this video can easily be a two and a half hour video and I do not wanna do that. So I'm just gonna fly through some of these concepts, like I said, and uh, hopefully it'll provide value to you guys in the future. So um, introverted intuition provides the meaning behind what will be. Unlike SI's traditional orientation to what should be based on the past examples in the past hierarchies and the past patterns that they've seen, um, the NI function is what will be. So again, I talked about in the SI video how kind of one has this past orientation and one has a future orientation. Okay, I don't want to say that SI users live in the past. It's not, that's not true. It's SI users use the past as a reference. Okay, they use the past as a reference to how things are going to be in the future. Okay, so whereas NI in itself looks at doesn't really consider past or historical context. It looks at here's the pattern now and here's what's going to be released by me based on what I've seen in my life, not the past necessarily, based on what I've seen and what I've formed and what conclusions and the theories and insights and universal truths I've come up with and letting go of the past. I've come up with this universal truth. I'm going to fit this in my model and then project what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so a lot of you may ask, well, that sounds like the past. Well, it kind of is, but it's not so much, hey, this is what happened in the past, more as it's, I formed this idea or this theory and this universal truth, or I've uncovered this, and I'm going to use that as my reference point, not so much, hey, this is what happened in the past. It's more of an idea or a concept I've come up with, which allows me to predict the future. So uh, it is often said that NI has this future orientation, which it does, but it's best described as an unconscious flow of perception into awareness. Okay, so NI, it, it's an unconscious flow of perception into awareness, and that's really how you can tell NI is really conscious or not, is how often you're getting these synthesis uh, insights, and I'll talk a little more about that here in a little bit. So some of these flashes of insights are aha moments or eureka moments as suddenly a pattern is synthesized from the unconscious mind and is brought into awareness. So uh, maybe I have, I've already figured out world hunger, right? It already just came up to my mind, but I haven't brought it into conscious awareness yet. So maybe that's because I don't highly prefer and I prefer to judge before I proceed. So maybe that's where my challenge is that maybe I've already solved that problem, but it hasn't brought into my consciousness yet. Therefore, I do not know the answer. Okay, so it may have already formed, it may not be there, I don't know. But it'll come when it comes and it won't if it doesn't. So this unconscious flow into perception is what really determines uh, kind of your strength of NI. And, uh, you know, how these things are brought into your perception, how often they're happening, happening, not that strength is related to the function, the position of the function on your functional stack. I'm talking about the function itself, how 
how strong is it within you? I mean, you can be a tertiary NI user and have stronger NI than a dominant NI user. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's unlikely because you're not using it as much, but it can happen. All right. So uh, what that is that those flashes are aha moments. Um, as suddenly a pattern is synthesized from the unconscious mind and brought into awareness. And when a per subject prefers introverted intuition or NI for short, meaning symbols or signs and interpretations, generally come to the conscious awareness before the concrete information. So if I'm looking at something, let's say I look at this pencil, the first thing I'm gonna that's gonna be released to me is not so much the details of the pencil, like the color of the thing, it's what is released to me. What does this pencil mean? What is it, what is it bringing out into my consciousness? What does it represent? What's the meaning behind it? Who, who made it? When I look at this, I think of, the first thing that comes to my mind, actually right now, the first thing that came to my mind as I looked at this pencil was, wow, I wonder how many of these they sold and who's they? How many, of, it looks like the person that made this BIC. So how many did they sell? And, and I have one, I figured I bought what this for, I don't know, 50 cents or whatever, times that by how many people actually have this pencil. I'm thinking about what context it has in a larger perspective. Then I start using details to support that, which is my tertiary SC. Okay, so, um, and that's that's my focus okay so i can use se i can look at it and go okay here's the details here's what's going on and if you look at it closely you start saying okay i'm going to try to interpret the design on here what does all this mean it looks like some kind of series of stuff and then i'm trying again if you heard me that was totally unconscious what came out was what does all this mean okay so again it's i can't just accept that it's just a little design and it has no purpose there has to be some kind of purpose for it so um this is often associated with uh, what is the meaning of incoming information? What does it imply? What will happen next? And it can often be referred to as a sixth sense, as these random flashes of awareness do not need an impetus. They don't need something to release them. So I could be sitting there and get a flash of awareness about something that I never got before. And it can happen if I wake up in the morning. It can happen if, uh, you know, taking a shower. It can happen if I'm doing a routine task or mindlessness or sitting there. I don't know. A lot of people experience a lot of these insights when they're on drugs. Uh, you know, sometimes when you suppress the conscious mind, your NI is going to come out more and more. And I'm not endorsing the usage of drugs here. I'm saying that that is a reason why a lot of people tap into that creative side is they, they rely on, uh, that's, they shut down that cognitive mind, allow this unconscious NI to come up into their, uh, their personality. So, uh, keep that in mind. One of these, ins once these insights do come in awareness, uh, they the NI user can be very, very stubborn about the truth behind it because they've seen the patterns, they've backed it up with enough details to really be convicted about it. And here's where the challenge comes with other people trying to understand NI types is that they're like, oh, you know, I don't quite understand like why you're so confident in this, like why you believe this. You know, I argue with people about their intentions more than they try to tell me that that's not right. And I don't like when people argue with me about my own intentions, but at the same time, it makes me hypocritical because I'm still focusing on their intentions. And I'm so convicted that I'm right about their intentions because I've seen it a hundred thousand times, but here's where it's, it's too stubborn. What if this person's the exception? Okay. So that's me using this unconscious any and saying, okay, you can question your own, you can question your own insight question. What if this person's an exception? What if there is an exception, you know? So, uh, more often than not, they can't even begin to explain how it's true. So when it, once an NI has a NI user has this insight, they have a difficult time immediately explaining how they know it to be true. They're like, "Look, I just know, I just feel it. This is the way it is. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it." And then you give them some time, especially if they're a logical uh, per, uh, person, they can structure out information to support their conclusion. So uh, the sense of the future and the realizations that come from NI have sureness and imperative quality that seems to be demand action and help us stay focused on fulfilling our vision or dream of how things will be in the future. Okay, so again, that's this, uh, these, 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 if I do this, this is what's going to happen. So once they have this vision, every type is capable of producing a vision. But the thing that the reason why NI users are often called visionaries is because not that they don't have a hard, not that any other types have a hard time having a vision or a dream or a goal, it's that NI typically can see the road to that goal. Okay, so it makes them a little more consistent on sticking on that vision because they know what's going to happen. If I do this, it's going to yield this. If I do this, it's going to yield that. Okay, so remember, they have this certainty, this sureness about them. So the NI user can hold uh, the ideal future society or system within that NI and rigorously drive toward the goal and turn it to reality because they see the steps that it's taking to get there. This is why NI is often associated with a deep sense of conviction and certainty. For indeed, the INJ is believing something is not the same as knowing something. So they... They know that, hey, I believe this or I know this. Um, 
they feel like they know on a deep intuitive level that their insights are true and they uh, this inspires them often seen as this visionary drive so they're very driven um because they this is the way i know it is i understand this i know this i feel this and they intuitively know okay so you, you can see this very much with ti and fi as well um you know and si there's this there's this confidence because it's experience and insight and there's this confidence that comes with introverted functions because that's what balances us out, out is these introverted functions that allow us to be unique in our, our subjective impressions. Okay, so you will see that uh, NI users also uh, can and may often feel that their internal world is very rich and very beautiful, and they may find a difficult time expressing or describing this world, and they can elicit a large challenge for them. This is one of the reasons why you can see them using metaphors or abstract symbols. And a good example of this is uh, re rereading Atlas Shrugged uh, from Ayn Rand. Not that you agree with her objectivism per se, but just if you look at this, what you're going to see in Ayn Rand's philosophy and, and even in her book is she uses a ton of different metaphors to explain things. It's constant, like, and she uses as if, like, like this, like a, like a, you know, describing things because she wants people to see the abstract relationship between all these concepts. Okay, and these similes in her writing are very much what depicts her style of writing, not to mention that that's how she speaks because uh, she's often claimed as an INTJ. Okay, so that makes she, her a dominant introverted intuitive. So this is her preference and hence why she writes in the style. NI, uh, NI users can often shift their perspective, view and understand things from different angles and in different ways, each giving insights, synthesizing information, and trying to get the best outcome for the problem at hand and accomplish a vision of the future. The perspectives are evoked by a focus on physical symbols, archetypes, totems, and other abstractions like visual models. This ability allows the NI user to see the underlying meaning and universal truths of natural law behind symbols, symbols and abstractions and apply them in other places that appear unrelated or contradictory. This particular paragraph, I don't know where I got this from, but I'm going to interpret it the best I can. Okay, there was, uh, there was somebody that wrote this online, and I wish I could credit them. Um, for that, but I do not know where this information came from, but it, I, I believe it to be accurate. So um, credit and props to the person that did write this. And then I person can shift the perspective, you understand things from a different angle in different ways, each giving insight. Okay, so if I look at things from this way, I can get insight. Like I said, for questioning myself about NE or questioning myself and going, okay, maybe this is not the case. Maybe this person is the exception. It's the same thing, looking at things from different angles. And, but the difference is, Unlike any, they're trying to get the best outcome and converge, whereas any is more focused on expanding. Okay, so convergence versus divergence. Remember that hourglass on its side really kind of helps break this down. Perspectives are evoked by focusing on these physical symbols, archetypes, totems, and other abstractions like visual models. So it's very, very common for uh, introverted intuitives to use visual models. Um, surprisingly, um, they they rely they have a high sense of of relying on graphs and data that they want to see to summarize information. Um, they, they are able to look at the big picture. So they want to see not all the details, not all the nuances. In fact, one of my, my INTJ business partner, he's very focused on using graphs for me to explain to him on graphs. Here's how it needs to, here's how things is because he wants to see the snapshot. He does not want to see every little nuance. He wants to see, here's the trend. Here's the, he wants to see the big picture. Okay, so they want to see that underlying meaning and the universal truths and natural law behind these symbols and abstractions and apply them in other places that appear unrelated or contradictory. So they take these perspectives and, and embody them, but they, they're eventually trying to get to a senior point. They're striving for perfection and they will step up to the plate when it comes at a, uh, when it comes to a, an opportunity to change the status quo, to move something more forward, um, and what their version of that particular situation of perfect might be. So what um, they want to see, they want to have something, some kind of thing, an understanding, hey, this is, uh, this is, I think this could be even better. Okay. I, I think this could, there's a way to make it different. Like if you, if you uh, think about Napoleon, right? Um, think about this guy. Okay. Napoleon inspires me in a lot of ways. And uh, let me just read the summary here. Let me grab this. All right. So there's a, there's a, if you heard me, there's a summary here. A, uh, a visionary workaholic fascinated by every detail in the running of his empire. Um, See, so now you're like, okay, well, he's fascinated with every detail. Now, this is, again, look at semantics here. Napoleon wrote a new legal code, transformed the French educational system, created the, the Louvre and the Bank of France, introduced the metric system, and rebuilt Paris. Okay, so he was very involved in a lot of these things, and he was always looking for these opportunities in the moment. 
Now, a lot of people may question what type was he? That's not the point. This is very depiction of an eye is focusing on the, all these little aspects that come to be. Do you think Napoleon actually did build every block and brick of that particular bank? No, he had the idea and he said, okay, drive this forward. I'm going to have the people build this and I'm going to build this and I'm going to build this. So remember that. Um, they're not involved in those little tiny nuances they're involved in. How do I make everything integrate into this full big picture? Okay. So uh, again, he was focused on this, this uh, striving for perfection because things weren't working right. The things weren't the way that he wanted them to be. And uh, the thing about NI users, what you're going to find is the unknown is an addiction they are often not able to shake for NI users. The unknown is an addiction. What I do not know, it curses me. And so here's where the, the paradox seems to be at NI users. They may appear to you as arrogant. They may appear to you as they know it all. But then the reality is most NI users know how much they don't know and it plagues them. Okay. That's the problem that I think most people don't understand about NI users is they know how much they don't know and it plagues them. Okay. They know a lot, but typically they will know a lot typically because they're, they know how much they don't know. So they're more hungry to drive into that unknown. That is their focus. Whereas NE users are more focused on the new, what new and exciting opportunities are available. The NI user is focused on what they don't know. And so if your focus is on what you don't know 99% of the time, where are you going to, how much are you going to know? If you know how much you don't know and that's where your focus is, you're going to try to know more. So not all NI users do know a lot. So you got to remember that too. Some of them, they know they don't know and they accept that they don't know and they don't strive for anything else. They just enjoy the unknown. My experience is the most NI users I know, INFJs, INTJs, ENTJs, ENFJs, are striving for this, this ageless pursuit of knowledge. More so even NTs than NFs. Um, uh, NTs typically will root into the sciences where NFs are more rooted to psychology and people and perspective. Okay, so uh, NTs are very drawn towards this unknown science side. Okay, so remember that. So when it comes into psychology, the science of psychology, NTs love that aspect as well. So you're going to see a lot of that uh, in NTs and NFs. So this this drive, but again, it, the... Uh, the, the purpose is NI is so focused on this. I know that INFJs and INTJs, ENTJs and ENFJs all very, very, very much addicted to the unknown. And uh, they want to know. They want to know. And it's not so much knowing the details. Like, I don't care what you do in your daily life, but I'm, I want to know how much I don't know. And I want to continue to explore that. So you'll find a lot of this in the people who prefer introverted intuition. Um, not always, but a lot of time. Okay, so for this reason, though, um, it would not be uncommon to see an introverted intuitive, a person who prefers introverted intuition, who seems as if they have everything together, all of a sudden abandon everything and begin a brand new course in order to pursue the unknown again. Okay, so you can see this both in the intuitive types that uh, they are they are very focused on uh, new and unknown. So they may be doing something for a long period of time. If you don't, that's it. I, I got a new insight. I'll abandon everything and I'm going to start a brand new course and do it right. And so they're very easily frustrated by repetition in routine. So if you're trying to employ an NI user, think about what kind of environment you would have to create for these people to thrive. It's tough. It's tough. So uh, it's just something to think about. Another characteristic of NI is the independence of mind. It's independence of mind. Sorry, I said mind, but it should be mind. Uh, NI dominance confidently trusts their intuitions, insights, ideas, and inspirations, often no matter what others say. Their thoughts become part of who they are, and they're completely independent of the world they live in. So NI dominants are the most independent-minded of all other types. Um, and I, this is a natural thing. It comes very natural to be independent. Again, I don't want to go to a church. I don't want to go to an edge school. I don't want to do anything. I want to be independent. I don't want to subject my insights to anybody else. Um, so the insights they pick up on their lives are completely original and subjective they don't want other people giving them, them these insights they do want knowledge from other people again because they're attracted to the unknown but they don't want them to give them the insights that they're released for this reason in our dominance feel like aliens and uh if they perceive a completely different reality from everyone else so very common in injs is you're going to see this uh this uh separation from what's real and what's not and they typically will love this theoretical independence per se okay so Another characteristic is uh, meaningful insight. Uh, NI users involve synth synthesizing the seemingly paradoxical or contradictory, which takes an understanding to a new level. Okay, uh, using this process, one can have moments when 
uh, completely new unimagined realizations come to them, often during times of relaxation and uh, after a con concentrated intellectual activity, when the mind is allowed to wander freely, NI seems to take over and produce this sudden clarifying of insights, eureka moment, here are things. Uh, my business partner often describes his insight about a new medical system as he had, he saw the human body and then one day it was like, it all became like a, um, like all in a very confetti style way of seeing how the human body works and it hit him at a moment and he had a solution that no one else had thought of and that's what we pride ourselves on is being original and um pair that with fi with intjs and entjs it's really really focused on originality so this is where my challenge personally is um dealing with people giving me advice it really really frustrates me when i don't ask for it and so it's another area that i'm working on developing as well so ni is a way of seeing things that rise above competing views Engaging this process starts with entering a state of withdrawal from the world in order to purposefully gain an insider realization. And these insights may manifest as aha experiences, the kind of thing that pops into your head while you're taking a shower or thinking of it, uh, anything. And it's just like, ooh, there's an idea and I got to write it down. And so uh, once these insights come to pass, they can align themselves with the global model, transforming it into an updated perspective of the world in the future. So therefore, that idea, once it comes to fruition, it starts patternizing with everything else that you've come up with. It's building a framework. NI is also building a framework, but it's a framework of abstractions, whereas TI is building a framework of rationalization. Okay, rational ideas. TI is very rational focused. NI is not, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. You know, people will argue with me, oh, well, that's not true. Yes, it is. I uh, will explain that in a minute. We can argue about it, but I'm not going to really discuss it because I don't want to argue with anybody. I don't care. Um, prediction. And I is always looking for implications of how the future will unfold. And I often t find themselves laying out how the future will unfold based on unseen trends and telling signs. This is how things are. Certain cues, certain nuances that people do. I'm like, oh, here's what's happening. Here's what people are doing. Here's what's going on. And so... Big, big sign of that NI, if you're, if you're confused if someone is an ESTJ or ENTJ, INTJ or ISTJ, just remember um, that they are predicting. Here is how things are going to unfold. They're very confident in these predictions. Whereas SI and the ISTJ and the ESTJ are going to be using experience to tell you how things will unfold. I've seen this a thousand times. This is gonna be no different. The NI user may not reference the past or experience. They may reference an insight. They'll make, they may prelude with something like, here's how I see it, or here is what I see, and here's, and here's why. And so they're analyzing that present moment using SE. You said this, you did this, you said this, you said this, you said this. What do you think that's going to result in? Whereas SI user may go, I've seen three people do this, four people do this, six people do this, seven people do this and they all went that way so therefore you're probably going to go that way too okay so that's kind of a difference not that we don't use one or the other remember that we prefer one way okay so again you can do both you can use data from the past and you can use insight from the present moment se and i polarity and uh, si any polarity we will talk about that at the time i'm not talking about polarities right now all right so compartmentalizing a big sign of uh ni as compartmentalizing and so you'll see NI users are very good at compartmentalizing naturally. Unlike extroverted intuition, NI must extract ideas and concepts from its surrounding context, and it desires to keep its abstract patterns separate and distinct into their own unique pattern or category. Much like introverted thinking has categorical rationalization, so does NI. What this means is that each idea is confined to its own idea box until a connection is drawn between the two. This line drawing or connection can take a very short or very long period of time, uh, because it's subjective, it's lacing it with a lot of subjective abstractions that they that has been sitting in the archetypes of the brain for a long period of time. The difference lies um, between TI and NI is that TI does it with rationality, NI does this with abstraction. Now, this can be a bit complicated to try to understand, but according to Carl Jung, the unconscious mind can transcend paradoxes. However, this compartmentalizing nature of NI can fail to see the connectedness between what is happening right in this moment so uh, maybe two things happening, they may fail to see the connected right in the moment, but they will synthesize that at another time. Uh, so they can, it can fail to do that. In spite of this, eventually NI will come to terms and recognize the finished puzzle, which comes into a form of a strong impression or vision. NI manages to assemble these connections from things they have previously stored and not necessarily the present moment. And don't be mistaken though, they can often read deeply into the meaning of something in the present moment, and how things may continue to pan out if they keep happening as they are. Okay, so 
this is quite different than extroverted intuition who often fails to experience the same degree of conviction on their insights. They too may think they have a meaning, but they're generally less stubborn or fixed on the idea as their focus on the con connections there is between things and not the meaning behind things. So one way to look at this differently is to see any is excitement and NI as conviction. Okay. And he's very excited about the new and I is very focused and convicted about their insights they come up with. And he may be, Hey, I had an idea. And then and I user may go, you know what? The idea sucks. And he goes, well, I had another idea too. So I forget that idea. Whereas the NI user is like, no, no, no. Let me try to tell you why this idea is beneficial. Let me show you why that you want to look at this idea more seriously. Okay. So, uh, Another characteristic of NIA is a deep perceptiveness. Uh, this is the this is the biggest pain in the ass for almost every other type that doesn't actively use NIA in consciousness. Is this deepness? And I'm going to talk to you. A lot of people say, "Well, that's not deep," that or "That's deep," and people see that as a compliment. But it can also be a challenge. It's it's kind of di it has this dichotomy to it that I'll explain in a minute. So, NIA possesses a deep knowing and strong powers of abstract analysis and focus. So those who consciously use and I have an intense desire to dig for this deep perception, this deepness, as and it's intoxicating to them. Again, the unknown. Um, this this can create them the sense to uh, where they almost want to objectify people, especially the NTJs, more than the NFJs. Okay, so NTJs want to objectify people. I want to know what is behind the soul of this person in the fastest period of time. So uh, this this can often be seen in in the dating situation as interrogating. Um, so if they're going to on a first date, it may, it may be like questions like, what are your goals? What are your ambitions? What do you plan on doing? How are you planning on getting there? What's your rationalization of this? What's your purpose behind this? Why do you do stuff like that? What is your motive behind that? And you're not asking questions like, what is your favorite color? And NI user doesn't care because that doesn't release an insight per se. They want to know the deepness and this is their deep focus is this deep perception. So they want to get to what it means, what that person represents. They want to get to that very metaphorical symbolism that that person represents. What does this person represent at their soul? Not so much, oh, you know, like, oh, this person, I like this person because their favorite TV show is The Vampire Diaries. Oh my God. Okay. No, that's not what they're about. That is not what the NI is focused on. It is focused on the, okay, other types, I'm not, a, I don't mean to offend you. That's not my point here. Other, it's just that NI has this natural focus to get on that very deep, very quickly, whereas other types may uh, focus on the social nuances like an ENFJ and INFJ may not ask those questions uh, for the sole fact that they want to know, but they think there's a better process because of FE. Okay. So remember that, keep that in mind too. FE is looking to accommodate. So they may not ask those questions because it may be considered rude or invasive or privacy. The uh, NTJs don't care typically, or they don't rather, they may care, but they don't think about it consciously. It's not there. It's not like, Oh, I've got to be worried about what this person thinks. So they may ask questions that are seen as culturally inappropriate on first dates. And uh, because they want to know, like, what does this mean? So getting into conversations about someone's history, uh, you know, their dating life, who they dated in the past, because, you know, it may be, and I'll just throw this out there just for you all to kind of laugh at me. But one of the things that I've always asked is like, I want to know who somebody dated before and talk about their past experiences. I don't see it as rude. I see it as a pattern. You know, if you've dated, you know, five crackheads, I don't want to be number six. What do I have in common with the other five crackheads? that you're choosing me over these other five. I want to know what you see in me that reminds that's your pattern. Why am I in the same pattern as the other five crackheads? And that's, <laughs> that's my angle is like, okay, so if you, if you are after me, but you've dated previously five crackheads, why, what is the connection between the two? What is, what is the meaning behind your motive? What is, what is it you really want? Do you want out of your lifestyle? Are you using me? What do you, what are we finding out here? Again, it's that deep meaning diving deep. Okay. So, this is a, uh, again, this is, is seen as, it's seen as very uncomfortable in a, in a sense of uh, what is socially appropriate. And this is what also offends a lot of people is this assumptive nature and this deep perception. Once they get that meaning, it's like, I know all about your life. Okay. And that's where people are like, whoa, oh, like I said, they talk about it like, like Will Hunting and Good Will Hunting. He, once he looked at that painting, it was like it all connected for him. And there it was, I knew your life. I knew who you are the minute I got the data that I need. So again, it can cause them, these NTJs to objectify people in the sense of this deep perception. And uh, so for this reason, they are often, they are not often nor care to be at the surface level of anything because of this deep natural preference for this depth. Okay. Um, for this reason, um, 
they don't really care about small talk, excessive details that provide no insight. Uh, they don't care about gossip. They generally won't find an NI user actively engaging in this type of conversation, unless of course they have learned to flex and use their other functions to accommodate people when it's necessary. Okay, so again, they're, they're, uh, they're not really paying attention to these small details or things they see as irrelevant. Um, they, uh, they may talk about other people to actually release insight with each other. So if you get two NTJs, they may analyze the situation. Why would someone say that? So it may appear as gossip, but it's really to actually enhance learning. So you may see that aspect as well. Um, their preference for this deep perception causes them to be adamant about inaccurate perceptions being problematic. Okay, so if they, they, someone else has a perception that they see as inaccurate, NI users naturally may want to challenge that perception or be challenging to that perception because they can see it as problematic and their prediction of the future. They can see these perceptions as a long chain of unfortunate events, a long chain of unfortunate events um, that could be, that could create problems in the near future. Remember, they're, they're predicting. So when you're seeing these, uh, they, once they get that deep pattern, they're like, oh, okay, this pattern's gonna be a problem. This person has this psychology that's gonna result in this. That's problematic. I've got to fix this perception and I've got to fix it now. So you may find that NI users typically want to help people. That's NTJs and NFJs. I don't care if it's NT, I don't care if you're a T or an F on this particular regard because you see a pattern and you can't, NI users just have a hard time just living with a pattern that is not working. They see it and they go, oh no, this is not going to work. I know where you're going to be in 30 years. Okay. So, and this can, um, this, this deep perception can also see NI users as fatalistic was, you know, hey, in a sense, they, they can take a small event, like somebody brush their hair in a certain way and realize that this person is vain, this person is superficial, this person is doing this and this and this and this and this, and this person continuing this pattern, had these ex-boyfriends that did this, and then does this, does this, and now this person is going to wind up, you know, 50-year-old with 30 different cats in their house that all pee and, and they're not in their litter boxes, Okay. So horrible end result, and they calculate this end result miles and miles and miles of way away, and they do it way ahead of time, and it can seem as very fatalistic or very uh, cynical, and but they do place this high value on truth, so keep that in mind too. So in light of this, uh, they can seemingly have a natural knack for getting to the bottom of things, though. This is where it really does help. By discovering these universal truths, these patterns that they see in this deep perspective and this deep, this deep knowing, a uh, particular person that really helped me create uh, this video in the sense of not, uh, in the sense of giving me content and helping me structure a lot of the insights that I had was Dr. A.J. Drent, who wrote, uh, you know, 16 Personality Types, My True Type, and he wrote a few other books. A lot of the stuff in this is in those books, so if you do have questions, I recommend reading those books. Um, he mentioned that NI users are entirely more interested in developing these deep universal theories based on these universal truths contrary to historically contingent present moment phenomena often seen by any users. That's where their focus is. Where any users are more apt to missing the deeper laws and principles, the NI user prefers to look at these things first. So um, he's, here's a particular quote from the book that I'm going to read directly as the book has, so you have a good understanding of kind of how the book format is. And it's really a great read, um, and it will give you insights that I've excluded in this video as well. So there's a lot of things in the book that won't really help you understand. So those are for you who are looking at good MBTI material, I highly recommend Dr. A.J. Drenth. And again, I will recommend this as well. Sorry, I'm arguing the camera. Um, this book as well, um, Dario Nardi. Dr. Dario Nardi, he, uh, the brain science of each, each function is in that book. And that's really, really fascinating. So keep that in mind as well. So here's the quote. For example, ENFP film critics will often focus on a film's unique and particular qualities, its cast, authorship, cultural and historical influences, etc. They are apt to evaluate the film on its own terms and according to its own context, viewing it as a unique creation on stage, on the stage of history. They may also compare it to other films that any brings to mind. INFJ critics, by contrast, may feel less intrigued by a film's particulars, at least from a theoretical standpoint, while its unique features may certainly be interesting from an entertainment perspective. They are of less theoretical interest to an NI. To NI. For NI, a film's particulars are the mere liter uh, iterations of deeper human patterns this, um, so deeper human patterns, INFJ critics might therefore be inclined to highlight the way in which various eternal archetypes manifested in the film, or how its depictions of good and evil represent projections of the moral struggles of the human psyche. From this, we can see how the INJ's deep focus has a way of stripping away local and historical factors in order to highlight perennial patterns. And while ENPs may also uh, be aware of deep patterns such as archetypes, archetypes are likely to play a smaller or more tangible uh, 
tangential, tangential role in their thinking. Okay, so just remember that that's a quote from the book. Uh, if you guys are, are interested in that book, please check it out. It's really worth it. Um, it does, that gives you a good example, kind of the difference between any and NI in this particular example, film critics, okay? Another characteristic of NI is a uh, powerful insight. Um, I'll talk more, it's a release of that. Uh, Dr. Dario Nardi, which is the book I just showed you, The Neuroscience of Personality, described this particular characteristic of NI that stands out and is interesting to me. Uh, the any mind, which can be seen as an explosion of ideas, the NI user's mind may appear to be more relaxed state of awareness. Dr. Dario Nardi called this a Zen state. He stated that uses the entire brain to realize answers in two phases, incubation and hatching. These two stages can be seen almost like a perceiving and judgment stage, but it's not. It can be seen that way. Uh, incubation is when NI is forming concepts, and hatching is when the realization of the concept is brought into consciousness. So another pers interesting perspective is NI and the eyes, which was also brought about uh, by Dr. A.J. Drent. And another to save you time and effort, I will simply quote again a different thing from his book, My True Type. Although the, this information is not confirmed by M MBTI, I do feel like this is something that needs to be known, as many people have called attention to this. And so let's talk about the eyes. Uh, Though it's not addressed by Nardi specifically, uh, Dr. A.J. Dritz specifically did mention this. He's, and this is the quote from the book. It says, uh, eye movements may be served as an additional empirical clues for determining when a particular function is being used. Generally speaking, the extroverted functions are thought to be associated with direct forward gaze, FE or TE, or side-to-side -side darting movements, SE and especially any. The introverted functions appear to be associated with a downward and potentially upward gaze, suggesting the attention is turned inwardly. This makes sense from a spatial perspective if we think of extroverted perception as being broad and the introverted functions as being deep and inward. More specifically, when NI is being intensively used, the eyelids drop to a half mast um, as the gaze orients downward and converges. And if looking into a narrow tunnel, this gaze is consistent with the focused and synchronized nature of NI brain state, which seeks to zero in on an answer. And again, to his knowledge, uh, and, and he said, to my knowledge, this hasn't been confirmed and with careful empirical studies, nevertheless, some typologists believe the eyes can clue us into which functions are being employed, and there may also, there may also be a relationship between NI and nearsightedness. After all, the NI user's eyes are frequently fixing on a nearby point, opening the door to insight. Then distant sights, extroverted perceptions could feasibly be neglected or deprioritized. Conversely, we might predict EPs to be disposed to farsightedness since their eyes are constantly scanning outwardly, EJs and IPs, whose dominant function is a judging function, may fail to display any consistent pattern in this regard. Since the eyes are primarily organs of perception, as we saw with eye movements, these predictions, to my knowledge, have not been carefully studied. I mention them because they are theoretically interesting and may provide further clues to deciphering one's type. Okay, end quote. So, again, I highly recommend Dr. AJ Drenth. If you haven't done it, please check it out. He has a lot of interesting perspectives. Um, it's really helped the production of just this video alone. It's helped kind of categorize a lot of my thinking when it comes to understanding NI. But ultimately, NI's natural tension on this deep knowing is technically not a judging function. It does want to place certain perspectiveness in their correct places, which moves them closer to a singular convergent truth. As a side note, um, I did say this earlier, but I did receive several comments about people in the eye movement and how to fix type and how to type others. I will create a video on that. Uh, I do want people to know that there is a lot of intention to continually produce high quality content for you guys. If you don't think it's high quality, just unsubscribe. That's fine. Um, I will continue to try to refine things to make it higher quality in the future. So my primary point in relaying these videos is not so much my own insights, uh, but it's to relay MBTI as it is. And that's where the challenge is. A lot of people are correcting me or trying to correct me in the sense of you need to consider outside perspective. But the thing is, uh, these videos are MBTI. They're not my perspective. So I'm trying to keep it that way as much as I can. Now I do inject my own insight and I will tell you, hey, this is my opinion. This is the way I struggle. This is what I deal with. But again, just a side note, keep in mind that I'm trying to relay in each other. Anyway, moving forward, uh, you can look at NI kind of to summarize everything we've talked about, some of the characteristics that we, we had. I wrote this a while back, but I do want you guys to uh, see it kind of this way. Uh, look at it like this. Imagine there's a segment of computer code for every object, idea, person, expression, and thing. Okay, so think of it. Every object, there's a computer code for it. Like, kind of like the movie The Matrix, right? Like, think about the computer code that comprises this pen. If you've seen The Matrix, good. If you haven't seen The Matrix, you need to see The Matrix because The Matrix is like a depiction of NI. Like, if you understand how consciousness is 
how reality we experience it, if you look at it like a computer code, it really helps you understand what NI is. Okay, so the introverted intuitive prefers to see the code instead of what the object actually is in reality. So again, uh, I, I'm looking at what comprises this pen, the meaning behind the pen, and not so much hey, uh, the pen itself. So kind of you're staying outside the matrix, kind of like with Neo at the end of the movie, when he, after he essentially got shot a hundred times, maybe not hundred, but still got shot a lot, and he pretty much died. But it kind of woke him up, like, whoo, here I am. And he saw everything in the clearest of ways. He saw behind the objects. He no longer saw the matrix, but he saw what made the matrix. And that's what NI does in a sense, okay? And so he or she, the NI, the introverted intuitive, uh, does this in an attempt to merge all code into one complete software package, or in a sense, a universal understanding of everything ever perceived. So they're still digging for this ultimate truth like a TI person, but um, they're doing it in a different way. For, the, for example, in the sense of an introverted into the code, as you will, uh, that comprises a simple coffee cup could be the very missing algorithm behind the next breakthrough in technology. So they're looking at a particular coffee cup and they see the code and they say, oh, that's how this could fit here. Okay. Not the coffee cup itself. Any is going to think, okay, what can I do with this coffee cup? It's not the coffee cup itself. It's the code or something in the code that re is released to the NI user that all of a sudden goes, boom, I got this hidden pattern and I know what to do with it. I know how to integrate this. I know what to do with this now. And it has nothing to do with the coffee, coffee cup. It's just the code that comprises it. Because think about it. If you play a video game, let's say you play some random video game. Let's say you play Pac-Man, right? Well, Pac-Man, there's a code that formed Pac-Man. Maybe it's if bracket algorithm this equals blah, blah, blah. Shoot, open bracket. Here it is. Blah, blah, blah. Enter code. Print. Blah. You know, whatever. Echo. Whatever, whatever language you use for programming. Does that look like Pac-Man? No, it does not. It has nothing to do with Pac-Man. It doesn't look like Pac-Man. It's a totally different thing. So I can take that code that I got from Pac-Man, pull it out, and I can put that same line of code into something else, and I'm like, that's it. That's how it fits in. That's code. Is that It's a release of NI. So if you understand programming, you can understand how NI kind of works in the sense of perception. Ow, that hurt. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, and the... Let me think of how to put this. The observer of this person, okay, the observer of the introverted intuitive who is doing this uh, may wonder how these epiphanies come to fruition from something so simple. They're looking at this coffee cup and go, wow, I just got hit with an insight. I know how to solve world hunger. <laughs> from a coffee cup, what's wrong with me? So it lies in the fact that these codes are added to a large storehouse of abstract data in the unconscious mind. From there are patterns that begin to emerge and the introverted intuitive is able to begin to predict these patterns and in essence predict the future with amazing accuracy. People who do not prefer this function can be astonished by the sheer accuracy of introverted intuition when it's given the time to process information that it was acquired from sensory stimuli. Again, it uses SE to perceive the object, but it assume the object is totally forgotten and it's focused on the abstraction. Okay, SE perce perceives, and then they may refer back to SE to again remind themselves of the details to validate information or validate insights. Okay. People who preference introverted intuition generally have a closer touch with the unconscious mind and simply by pulling away from excessive sensory data into a quiet area can bring new insights into conscious awareness. For both ENTJs and INTJs, uh, they can be both overstimulated by sensory information. It's releasing too much at once. What? ENTJs can be overstimulated? Absolutely. Too much. Too much going on. Stop. Stop. It's too much. I'm being released with too many ideas. Ooh, overwhelmed. Yeah, it's, there's too many things that are just popping and you've got too many codes and they can all fit in and it's very overstimulating. And uh, I had a discussion with somebody on this recently and they said that, that's only introverts have that. And that's not true. Okay, Myers-Briggs does not talk about people being introverts. Okay, so remember, it's not that, that's not what it's about. Okay, although the introverted intuitive has very little to no conscious control over what data is being synthesized at any given time, they can be so closely connected to the unconscious, especially if there's dominant function, that they can become very fixated on their visions of the future and sometimes lose touch with reality itself. INJs are known to have out-of-body experiences, lose touch with reality, be so focused on this matrix code, they don't even see the, the actual objects anymore. They see what it's, it's meaning so much it becomes more real than reality itself. Okay? Um... You can't just tell an NI user, I want you to come up with something. I want you to come up with a new insight. It doesn't work like that. It's very unconscious. Okay? The only thing that's conscious is nothing about NI. It doesn't have a conscious control other than being able to kind of just choose to, to space out and get in a perception mode. 
in that perception mode is you sitting back and taking in information. Other than that, you can't really synthesize anything consciously. Okay. Uh, it's although introverted intuition is rarely seen on the outside, some indicators of people who may put preference this function is always searching for something more, driving deeper toward the unknown meaning or essence of something. So to give you a little practical example that's kind of understated, uh, but it's it, it's a practical reality. Um, think about a, a Macy may think of a standard grocery store chain. The user who may preference introverted intuition may see the store as not what it is, which is providing food for locals. Rather, they may see how it fits into a larger pattern. The uh, NI user may then wonder how these stores, how many there are, and if these stores are large money-making machines designed to make consumers pay an outrageous price for low-cost food, and if they ultimately are scamming their consumers. With that in mind, the introvert and intuitive may understand that the larger picture and miss the importance of eating, eating due to a personal value conflict, which would be an example of introvert and intuitive using introvert and feeling and um, neglecting the importance of SI, awareness of their own physical condition, because they see that these grocery store chains are causing they're making money and scamming people and they may have a value conflict and you know what? I'm not doing this. It, absolutely not. There's, there's, there's too many things I disagree with. Again, that's FI writing it off. Like, Oh, I made a value judgment. Whereas then I perceived, Oh, they're making a lot of money. You see what I'm doing? So of course anyone can do this. It's just more natural and apparent with people who have a preference for introverted intuition. All right. So, uh, just to quickly touch on, there's some characteristics of NI. I can make this video so long and I've flown through so many things already. Uh, I am going to talk a little bit about the clarity of SE. Um, with INJs, their inferior function is SE, and uh, they, it gathers an amount of information from the outside world and interprets the data, the abstract data, and along with its subconscious data, is assembling a puzzle in the mind. So remember, a puzzle in the mind is an eye, okay? It's always putting together this puzzle. After a while, think about this. Um, I got a piece of the puzzle here. I got a piece of the puzzle here, a piece of the puzzle here, a piece of the puzzle here. I can start to see the image of the puzzle immediately. And now I know how to fill in. I can make my own pieces to fill in the rest. That's what NI is about. It's about, I got these pieces and now I have an insight because I can see how the rest of these can fill in. I can fill it in with my own creativity. Okay. So this is uh, where uh, NI can have this, um, this certainty and, oh, it's going to be this because the pattern of this piece is with this piece. So it's, it's very convergent. Um, the, uh, INJs have a visual nature um, with an SE. They have a funny relationship with extroverted sensing. Um, this is INJs a lot of have times have a very sensitive side to beauty um, and if actually physical beauty, like they have a very sensitive side to it. You can see a lot of INTJs and INFJs, usually, especially in their latter years, are very appreciative of artistic or aesthetic environments. Um, they appreciate art typically. Um, or music, um, pictures, charts, diagrams. I talked about that earlier. Uh, it helps them and it, it, it almost touches with this internal, Hey, this is my internal spirit this is my internal soul. And so there's a big relationship. I could make a totally separate video on that and I probably will because there's a lot I wrote to that. So I'm just giving that for now. But remember this SE and NI have a very suppressive relationship. Uh, NI causes the person to withdraw from the active sensual environment in order to work effectively. Slightest nudge, impulse, noise, visual flash, uh, camera photography, you know, autographs. Okay, just kidding. Uh, can knock a person completely out of an eye. And it can totally derail their train of thought. And they can't stand being interrupted because of this. And prefer to surround themselves with only the most pleasant of sensations. Okay, so that's, for me, that's definitely true. I do not like being interrupted when I'm having some insights being formed to me. Like earlier when I described when I was on the plane looking at the water bottle, if somebody would have interrupted me, I would have been very frustrated. Okay. So this is where I can get irritable. If I'm doing something and someone's interrupting me, I can become very, very frustrated. So um, let's talk about how NI appears in some unconscious or non-preference types. Uh, tertiary, uh, NI manifests as a desire to optimize or perfect upon one pre-existing talents or skills. Um, how can I improve upon or even perfect the approach that I really take toward my main passion or interest Whereas an inferior function, and I originally manifest as a scorn or distaste for overanalyzing, it was obvious or overplanning for the future. Um, like ESTPs, the inferior introverted intuition matures, the user may find themselves developing a keen hunch for the way things are bound to unfold in the future and will enjoy entertaining these ideas, but they're not as necessarily as clear immediately on them. Okay. Uh, kind of everyone needs to stop overanalyzing. The answers are right in front of us. Can't you see it? It's super clear. It's kind of an example of how that works. All right. 
So uh, just think about how to develop NI. The best way that I would recommend is to put yourself in a position where you can use nothing but abstract thinking. So a lot of deep theoretical classes that require you to have critical thinking challenges TI, whereas I want you to think of something theoretical that only you can solve, and that's going to challenge NI. And it may not have to be a complicated situation, but something that may not necessarily have been solved. And that's a good way to really challenge an eye and to, 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 to develop an eye in the way it needs to be developed. And I think another thing that you can do to develop it as well is to allow to, to focus less. Now, everybody tells you, always be here in the moment. I don't care. Okay, forget the moment. If you want to develop an eye, take an object and don't think about what the object is. Like, hey, this is my iPhone. Okay, it's hard. It's got a case, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's me using SC. Think about the object and then disregard it and think about what this object represents. What does it mean? What space does it occupy? Okay. So, for example, I don't know how much this phone weighs. I would say it weighs, I don't know, less than 10 ounces. I have no clue. The case obviously adds weight, so it's less than 10 ounces. How does 10 ounces, that weight, affect space? Okay. How does it affect space? Just from a theoretical standpoint, how does that particular object affect the space around it? This is stuff that I used to think, and I now I'm not going to look anything up. I want to come up with my own theory and insight to figure out how to fix space, the space around it. Okay, now I'm not uh, I'm not great at physics and stuff like that, or even metaphysics, so I don't, I don't know a lot about stuff like that. But I have to think and contemplate about that, and I will. I'll sit on it for a few days. Eventually, when I get stuck and right uh, inside doesn't release, I'll go look it up and I'll say, okay, that's how. It, and then I'll wait and let it sit with new information, and then let that sit. Let it develop. Let my new insights come to fruition. Anyway, I'm going to end this video. Uh, I went over a lot of content, and uh, I think there's a lot more. I am sunburned, so you can see that's why I'm red. But I will say that there is a lot of uh, stuff to talk about with NI, and I will make plenty more NI videos in the future. And if you haven't, check out, check out Trey's videos on NI, Trey4L. Type that in YouTube. Look at his channel. There's he, he's, uh, he's got a great slant on NI that I think you guys would really, really enjoy. Uh, a lot of his videos are about NI. Uh, he's exploring NI in his own way, and it's uh, pretty fascinating stuff. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, comment, and then uh, we'll get to those, like I said. So hope you all have a great day, night, whatever time you watch this video, and uh, take care.